to receive the healing that you need in your body. There's some in the hearts. There's some in the minds. I hear him saying there's knees.
Kingdom uh, Interpreting Center in Roseville, California. And uh, you'll also host the, uh, the group on, on Facebook called uh, oh, yeah. Ecclesia in the Rising. That's how we first got to join the Ecclesia. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. All right. Well, um, we're just glad to be here. We're this. This was an absolute God thing because we were headed down to Southern California anyway, and uh, Kim texted me, or I think it was on Facebook, and said, uh, "You know, think you could ever come by and speak?" Yeah. And uh, anyway, just that this would be open it was really powerful. Yeah. And oh, he got that. Um, so what we just want to share is what's been on our heart, what we feel God has been uh, really pushing to the front for us, and that is this Ecclesia rising. Right. Yeah. And with Ecclesia, we're going to share a lot of things as we go through here, but one of the biggest things is just understanding that when we finally really step into who we are, when we really know who we are, everything changes. It does. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, there was a season where we kind of all would be looking for the enemy and we, you know, binding and delivering and binding and delivering. Okay. There's still a place for that. But when you really know who you are, I believe we can step into a room and all the demons go, whoop, that person knows who they are, we're out of here. Yeah. Because they don't want to mess with somebody who knows who they are. Yeah. And you walk in power and authority. Come on. Now, the goal is eventually to reach to be a mature son, to where you yeah. look like Jesus. And there's the goal. Yeah. and there's nothing that can that can stop you. But I do believe that if anybody like that does exist on the earth right now, I don't know that I've met them. And if I have met them, they're probably the some of the most humble people on the planet. Yeah, well, and they're not going to go around saying, "Yeah, I'm like Jesus." They're not going to tell you. They're not going to. You're not going to know. Yeah. The only way you're going to know is that when they step up to to heal someone. It's going to happen every time because they're only doing what the Father tells them to do and what they hear the Father say. So we want to get to that place where we really understand who we are. So we've got some videos that we want to share. They're just short little clips. And this first video is from Neo. Uh, anybody who watched The Matrix before? Okay. So this is out of that movie, and it's Neo finally realizing who he is. But picture this as you finally knowing who you are. And I hope we have the volume up good one. Yeah. <coughs> Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Y
really new way of existence. Yeah. And you know, as, as we have just progressed in what God has, has been showing us and revealing, um, it really all starts in the very beginning. Uh, when God created us, there was something very special about it. Is He gave us freedom to choose. There can be no true love without freedom to choose. And we were created for love. And so in the beginning, he gave two different trees. You know the story, right? Two different yeah. trees. Yeah. The tree of life, tree of knowledge of good and evil. And it was a big shock to me when I came to realize that most of my Christian life, I've been living out of the tree of knowledge. Okay, sure. Uh -huh. I grew up in a religion that was all about who's right and who's wrong. <laughs> instead of the place of love and freedom. Amen. And it's so different wow. to begin that I believe the tree of life is our plumb line. Sure is. The tree of life is about togetherness and wholeness. Amen. The tree of knowledge is about separation and division. Um, you know, but it's interesting because in our natural mind, we think about um, if I had been God, I would have made the tree of knowledge super ugly and disgusting <laughs> and gross so that nobody would be interested in even coming close to it. And yet the scriptures say that it was a beautiful tree oh, yeah. that had food that was good to eat. Oh, yeah. That was the appeal. appeal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was appeal. Yeah. And so God gave them the fullness of freedom of choice. But he also gave them love. And so we're going to be looking at several slides and just look at the difference between the tree of life and the tree of knowledge um, so we can see this. So in the garden, Adam and God always intended to give Adam and Eve everything that they needed, right? right. All the knowledge they would ever need, right? Yeah. But it was from relationship. Right. But they chose the tree of knowledge because they wanted it now yeah. in their own timing, in their own way. And so the tree of life is really about trusting God's way and God's timing. And a lot of times that's hard because it's like, this is a good thing. I know it's part of God's will, so I'm going to step into it now. How many of you know that's like, that's called Ishmael <laughs> and some other things? That's true, tree of knowledge. Um, so the tree of knowledge is where we want to get what we want now in our own way. Uh, the tree of life flows out of relationship. We learn everything that we need from God and from one another. So, yes, we have been blessed to be here and to share what God has given us, but guess what? It's a two-way street. Sure is. And we learn from you. You bless us. And just, you know, already the time that we've been here, we're blessed. We're going away full <laughs> of our trip. Um, the tree of knowledge is very much independence. I can do it on my own. And that's the Western mindset. Everything we're taught from when we're little. Yeah. Even, you know, you get into those twos, it's, I'm going to do it my way. <laughs> um, so the tree of life is from love. The tree of knowledge is law and legalism. And believe me, I've been there. <laughs> but there's so much freedom when we begin to step into the tree of life and all that it means. So just a few more things is that the tree of life is primarily about love. Again, God gave the tree of knowledge of good and evil for them to have a choice. They could choose to do things their own way or they could choose to remain in relationship. But they would have received all the knowledge of good and evil that they would have ever needed or wanted through relationship with the Father. Amen. But instead they chose, I want it now and I want it my way. Amen. And that was the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Right. So they had the freedom to choose and then... The other thing is I only do what I see the Father doing. That's the flowing from the tree of life. Just like when we started here, spontaneous yes. just sensitivity to understanding that Holy Spirit is here. Amen. He's always here because you know what? He lives inside of, inside of each one of you. Yeah. So he's always here. 
Which is really cool when you think about it because the Holy Spirit living in you is like a portal into another dimension because you're getting a portal into yeah, yeah, the yeah. kingdom. Boy, that's right. And when you pull all these people together, that's why corporate worship is so powerful because you've got all these portals opening up a larger portal into the kingdom to where it's just so much easier to enter in. It's powerful. But the more you practice on your own, the more and the easier it is to just enter in whenever you need to, whenever you want to, just to enter into the kingdom. Because the Holy Spirit lives inside of you. So again, it's that place of flow. You don't have to be striving to get anywhere. Uh, and then humility. In the tree of life, you're going to find humility, not pride. Pride is, you know, again, when we reach that place where we are mature sons and we look like Jesus, we're going to talk about fivefold here in just a moment, but you're going to have all the gifts. You'll have everything. And can you imagine, I just, this just, my heart just melts when I think about, if you had five mature sons together, now the sons meaning, you know, it's not gender exclusive, it can be women as well. But you got five mature sons that are together, and the Lord gives a command to move forward to a mission. They're not going to be saying, well, I want to be the apostle, I want to be, you know, they're not going to be doing that. They're just going to step right into what's in front of them, just to move as a body, as one, because there is no pride. And humility is what they ride on. They ride on that wind of humility and just go where the Lord is leading. Amen. So that's what we're looking for in mature sons. Amen. Then being a Berean versus a skeptic, this is one I definitely still struggle with. <laughs> because I I have, number one, we, my wife is a fourth generation, was a fourth generation Seventh-day Adventist. I pastored in the Seventh-day Adventist church for seven years. Wow. And... It has its place. It's a beautiful church. I needed the analytical, logical approach to get me in. But once God got me in, he had another plan for me. But he needed that to get me in. That's why we have to learn to appreciate and honor every part of the body, no matter who they are, what they're doing, if they're on. You know, Lord showed me a vision. It's like you've got a two battlefield, you know, a battlefield, and you've got two sides. One is Jesus' side, and the other is the enemy's side. And you're looking at somebody and you're wondering, is this a brother or sister? Would they be lined up with me on Jesus' side or are they going to be on the enemy's side? Come on. May not believe like me, but they're on Jesus' side. Come on. So let's just get together and let's fight the enemy together and stop fighting one another. It doesn't make any sense. Yeah, that's yeah. And then, so anyway, to be a Berean means I'm looking at things to understand how they fit together, not how I can get rid of it. The skeptic, that's been my issue, one of my issues, one, my wife is smiling. Yeah, yeah just one of them. <laughs> By the way, we do this together. We started almost a year ago just teaching everything together. Every time we teach, we teach together. Because we believe that the fullness of God is seen in the man and, and the woman. And it, it works really well for us. So. Amen. But I would tend to look at things, and if it didn't fit my theological grid, the skeptic in me would come out and I'd start trying to figure out how to get rid of it. And the Lord really got on my case about it because we went and saw this one speaker and it just, 90% of it offended me. I was just like, I cannot believe this stuff. I was really upset. I thought this was a waste of three days. And money, and you know. But then I get back home and God's, you know, I'm opening my Bible and I'm starting to read and I'm seeing this stuff jump out at me that this guy was teaching. I'm like, no way, Lord, no way. <laughs> And he's like, you need to stop being a skeptic, otherwise you're going to miss out on a lot of things that I have for sure. I need to be looking at it to see how it fits. And if I can't figure out how it fits, just set it aside for right now. Because when it's time, if it's time, you will bring it back and you will put it into the puzzle place where it belongs. Amen? That's right. Good work. Good work. So, learning from God and others is out of the tree of life. And the other one is exalting what I know. I've come to a place where I've stopped. I'm trying to stop saying... I know this because when I say I know this, yeah. I've already put it in a box. No one else can teach me, and I know it all. Therefore, stop trying to speak to me. Uh, That's kind of the attitude that starts to come yeah. out when someone says, "Well, yeah. I know, I already know that." Uh, okay. No, I'm going to be learning. I'm going to constantly be learning, open to what God is show, showing me with discernment to be able to know how to spit out the bones and chew up the meat, right? But there's so much good stuff out there that people get offended about, and they never get to enjoy the, the meat of it because it didn't come in a package that they're used to. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. So we have to learn to just 
be discerning and receive what God has. And if we don't understand it, just set it aside. We don't need to, it doesn't need to divide us. We need to learn how to come together and love one another because I can guarantee you there's not two people in this room that agree 100% on everything. No. Amen? Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. Amen. No. So, no. <laughs> <laughs> and you should, it's fun when we come down to the place of, uh, okay, how we're, we're going to teach on this and how we're going to teach on it. and uh, But it's a beautiful thing because we'll, it's, it's like a sifting, you know, as we kind of oh, yeah. rustle back and forth trying to figure out what's going to be the piece that's taught and who teaches it and how it's taught. And then it finally comes out, and we just move on. And sometimes, even while we're speaking together, one of us will say something that the other doesn't agree on, and it's just like, okay, Father, do I say anything? Just let it go. <laughs> because it's okay to give another point of view, but we don't need to be argumentative. No, no. But we can share a different point of view. That's totally fine. Amen. So um, anyway, so we have another video, and the thing is. God wants us to learn how to step into the other dimensions that he has for us. And if we are skeptical and throwing everything out because it doesn't fit our grid, we're going to miss out on a whole lot of good stuff. So this is out of the book of, or out of the movie from Narnia. And here we go. Amen. 
Yeah, so we believe in heaven, right? Mm -hmm. I believe it's more real than what we see here. Oh, yeah. Amen. You know, this, Amen. we think this is solid, and yet when you get down to the molecular structure, there's more space. So it doesn't quite make sense. Yeah. I believe heaven is more real than this. This is the matrix. It is. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And so we need to learn to start stepping in because when we get into this a little bit further, talk about the ecclesia. Yes. What Jesus meant. How many of you have read uh, Ed Savoza's book, Ecclesia? Yeah. Okay, so you know where the background of that came from. But when Jesus, when the disciples were with Jesus and Jesus said, Upon this rock I'm going to build my Ecclesia, I can see the disciples going, Huh? Uh -huh. And what? What are you talking about? Because that was a government term. Yeah. And just real basic, if you served in the military for two years, mm -hmm. and there were two or three of you together, you could literally be in a place where there was no Roman government, but you could act as the Roman government because there were two or three of you. So because wherever two or three are gathered, you bring in Jesus and you've got the kingdom. So the ecclesias are literally wherever two or three or more are gathered that you begin to represent the kingdom. And then the job, our job, and what Jesus said, I believe intended, was that we would be Ascending to see what the Father's doing, see what he's saying, and then bring kingdom right back down into the earth and establish Amen. his kingdom on this earth. Amen? That's, right. That's what we're supposed to be doing. See, what I love about my husband is he's so enthusiastic, and he can never just go progressively through. He always like, oh, 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 this is coming pretty soon. i got to jump into it. Did I just step on your toes? No. <laughs> we haven't done this presentation before. We've done pieces of it all over, but we haven't done this one so far. But um, <laughs> I just want to you know, comment on, on that video. I, I love it so much because it's like breaking out of the box yeah. of where yeah. we are. And yeah. you know, being raised so long in the Seventh-day Adventist Church, and it was like in your DNA because it was fourth, fifth generation, um, you know, we just thought we knew it all. We knew who Jesus was, God was. You just needed to do this, 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 and this, yep. and you were good to go. Mm -hmm. And then when we broke out of that box and encountered the Spirit, it was like, Ooh, you yeah. know, a whole new world, and you know, introduction to the gifts and the flow. Or the first church we started going to was the Vineyard, you know, and that was just amazing. And you know, then you kind of you're there for a little while, and you go. I got this gown, you know, I don't have to prophesy, I don't have to do this, I don't have to do that, you know. And then, you know, we discovered fivefold ministry. Oh, here's another. You know, and, and then you get in that and you think, okay, now we got it, we got it. And then we hear about courts of heaven and wow, courts of heaven, you know, you get to see it through scripture. And then all of a sudden it's like, there's more than just courts in heaven. Whoa! Surprise. <laughs> There's more than just Jesus and God and Holy Spirit in heaven. There's a whole lot more to explore. And so you finally come to the place where it's like, okay, 